Hello everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel. I'm Clary Slim. Today I'm going to share with you a P6 topic called forces. Okay, the previous topic that I shared was about energy and this one is about forces. A lot of students tend to get very confused between these two. They don't know what the question is asking for, whether it's energy answers or is it forces answers. So if you are one of them who is confused too, please look at the energy video. It actually attempts to differentiate both of them very clearly for you. So this video is about forces. Okay, so what do we look at when we talk about forces? We talk about force as a push or a pull. That means there is a direction involved. Energy has no direction involved. So remember that. That's the main difference between the two. Okay, a force has a direction. That means there is an arrow that you need to, to draw usually for the answers that you write in section B. So the effect of the force is proportional to the size, which means the greater the force that you use to kick, okay, so that it will be a kick, okay, forcing forward. So the greater the force of the kick, the further the ball goes. That's what it means. So what are the types of forces? There is gravitational force, so attraction between two masses is gravitational force. What are the two masses? It will usually be the objects on or near Earth and the center of the Earth. Okay, so it's not just Earth that is pulling you down, there are other things that's pulling other things around as well. For example, the Earth's gravitational force keeps the Moon in orbit with the Earth. What does that mean? Okay, let me show you. So you imagine the force as a rubber band, okay? So my thumb is now Earth and my finger is the Moon, okay? So you imagine Earth and the Moon, there is a consistent pull, okay? the rubber band and the fingers has a consistent pull between each other so if i were to if imagine my finger is the moon if i were to get out of this pool what will happen i will just whoop i can go anywhere that i like i will no longer be in orbit isn't it so therefore you imagine this pool as a force from the earth and it is constantly pulling so why is it constantly in circle because it's constantly trying to get out because the moment i let go of this force or if this force is broken or i overwhelmed it i can go anywhere that i like okay and so the bigger the mass of the of the object the greater the gravitational force that means the further outreach it can go okay so the sun's gravitational pull for example the sun is bigger than the earth therefore the sun's gravitational pull keeps the earth and other planets in orbit with the sun okay so the earth can only be pulling one thing which is the moon but the sun is able to pull many many items all together at the same time okay okay so what is weight weight is caused by the gravitational pull from the earth so the further away from the pool, the lighter the object, which means we are actually heavier than the astronauts in space. Does that make sense? That's why they actually can appear to be floating, isn't it? Okay, because the gravitational pull is not keeping them down. Okay, so the weight of an object varies from place to place. So the higher you go, the lighter you go. So how does weight actually function? The weight actually function based on the pull downwards to the earth, right? So you imagine this is being pulled down, as you see, as I pull it down, push it down, the weight changes. So that is the meaning of weight, okay? That it is created by a gravitational pull downwards. So as you shorten this weight downwards, you can actually see the weight increasing. The next force that we're talking about, friction. Friction is something that opposes motion. So for example, if you're going this way, the friction is always in the opposite direction, okay? So as you're pushing, let's say my handphone, Okay, so I'm going this way, going this way on my hand. So there is actually a opposite direction force, a di opposite force acting on my handphone. As I go this way, the opposite friction is going this way. Okay, of course you don't see movement like that because we are trying to go against each other. It will always be the equal oppositional force. So what is friction bad? Friction actually slows down the movement of objects and the rougher the su surface, the higher the friction. Okay, so if compared to a sandpaper and a, a place that is smooth or a glass, for example, the ball can actually, the ball on the glass can roll faster than a ball on sandpaper because sandpaper is very, very rough, correct? So the heavier the object, the higher the friction as well. So compared to you pushing your own uh, uh, table across the room versus pushing a cabinet, across the room right the friction behavior for the cabinet versus the table so 
pushing, you realize that if you push certain things or if you do a lot of friction, so for example, an eraser, the more you erase, the smaller it becomes and then eraser dust will actually come out. These are the wear and tear that is caused by friction. Why is erasing possible in the first place? It's because every time you try to rub it against the pencil marking that you have done, it actually creates, there is actually an opposite directional force against the movement of you. So for example, you move forward, there is an equal and opposite force acting against it. So that is friction. So friction causes wear and tear, therefore the eraser gets smaller and smaller, the eraser does comes out as like a form of damage. So it produces heat. So you, if you want to just try it out, you can just rub your hands together and you feel, whoa, this is warm. Okay, so rubbing things against each other causes heat. Therefore, there are many, many ways to reduce this friction because friction causes wear and tear, friction produces heat. It will actually spoil, damage a lot of different kind of machines that actually help us run day-to-day -day, uh, activities. Okay, so what do they use? For example, in cars, they will use grease and oil and things like that. There is also wheels and ball bearings. So why are ball bearings and wheels effective? So you imagine the contact point is very small. So for example, this is a ball. So the contact point at each time is only at a small little place, which is at the bottom here. This is the only contact point. Therefore, the, 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 the less the contact point, the lower the amount of friction. Therefore, balls, bearings are actually very good to use in machines and wheels also. We can travel faster on wheels compared to if we operate on a flat surface. Okay, a flat surface produces a lot more friction. See, I can tilt my phone like this, I can tilt it like this, nothing is going to move. Okay, so that's the advantage of friction. It prevents sliding, it prevents slipping when walking and driving. Without friction, we'll never be able to walk. Right? Okay, it allows fingers to hold onto things and uh, so that it doesn't drop. But if I were to hold a ball, less friction, it can roll here and roll there and it drops easily. Okay? So what are the disadvantages then? It slows down movement, obviously. Yeah. Uh if without without uh, friction we can slide on our floor all over, <laughs> correct? Okay, so it produces heat and causes damage like wear and tear, and it's also a fire hazard if the heat is too much. Okay. Another force will be a magnetic force, you learn this in P3, so light poles repel, unlight poles attract, these are just reminders for you, it's strongest at the pole, the magnetic force is strongest at the end of the friction of the, of the magnet and is weakest at the center of the magnet. So it can pass through more non-magnetic materials, for example, copper, silver, gold and aluminium, no effect to the magnetic force, okay? And the magnetic materials will be iron, nickel and cobalt, okay? They will affect the magnetic force by capturing it. And the last one you need to uh, know, uh, rather, uh, it is commonly asked in uh, exam questions, elastic spring force, but it is only active when it is compressed or stretched, right? If it's just a spring itself, there is no force involved. You need to stretch it. If not, you need to compress it. Then the force will be there, all right? Let's look at some of the questions of forces. Uh, Tim set up an experiment as shown below. He used the spring balance. So this is the el elastic, uh, elastic spring force that we're talking about inside here, right? So he used the spring balance to pull two identical wooden blocks across ramp A and B. So Tim noticed that uh, more force was required to move the wooden block across ramp A than ramp B. So give a reason for his observation. So now you're supposed to think, okay, uh, both of them look exactly the same. What could be acting on them? So you remember what are the force questions because they actually mentioned more force, correct? So this is a clue to tell you, okay, this is a force question. So what must I think about forces? What are the kind of forces that I've learned? Gravitational force, uh, friction, oh, friction. So could friction be the answer then? Yes, so frictional force is actually affecting it. Therefore, your answer could be something like this. Okay, surface A is rougher than B before. Therefore, more frictional force resulted and thus needing more force to move it. So what are the keywords over here? You will have to say that surface A is rougher. So why do you need to say that? Because that is the main difference why both experiment that looks exactly the same thing using the same material, um, A is actually needing more force to pull, okay? That's exactly because surface A must be rougher. Because remember, we, when we learn frictional force, the rougher the surface, the more force you need, okay? Therefore, more frictional force required, okay? It is required to move it. So this is the two keywords that you will need for this question. 
And then the question carries on. Tim repeated his experiment using ram A as shown below. He measured the force needed to pull the wooden block using a ang different angle x. So the graph below shows his results. So you notice that in this graph, children, if you don't know how to read graph, this is always how it happens. They won't write any numbers for you, but they point the arrow this way, which means you imagine this one is zero. It starts from zero. So zero, one, two, three, four, imagine that. Okay. So imagine the numbers going bigger. So it means that, and this is going upwards, correct? So this is also zero going upwards, the number getting bigger, which means the, the diagram of showing upwards the graph of showing upwards shows you that the bigger the anger, the higher the force. Do you see that? Say again. Huh? The bigger the anger, because it goes this way, the number gets bigger. The higher the force. Why higher? Because it's going upwards. Okay. So that's how you answer relationship question or this kind of graph question. We'll see how the pulling force changes with anger x. So basically, this is a graph question, a relationship question. So this is how you answer it. The bigger the something, the more the something, or the lower the something, the higher the something is always the same way of answering. So in this case, it is the bigger the anger x, okay, the more the pulling force required, right? So that's the answer. The moment you get the bigger and the more, uh, respectively, you will get your correct full marks. The picture below shows a rocket flying into the sky. What are the two forces acting on the rocket? Okay, so this is actually a familiarity question you will need to know. Okay, so there's only two things uh, uh, acting on things that's flying in the sky. Number one, resistance. What kind of resistance? Air resistance. Because there's air particles all around, it actually creates a, a, a natural pressure. As you move against it, there is air resistance. Even when you're running, when you're driving, whatever that you're doing, there is air resistance acting against you. Okay, and there is another thing, second thing, it will be the gravitational force. So where is the gravitational force pulling? This is going upwards into the sky. The gravitational force is actually pulling you down back onto Earth. So if the air resistance is acting against the rocket, this is the rocket, is acting against the rocket, therefore the direction that you will draw is actually downwards. And if the gravitational force is pulling the rocket downwards, so this gravitational pull should, should pull should also be downwards. So what are the two that you will write down? So number one, okay, so it is actually the gravitational force over here and the air resistance. That's two of them, right? Okay, so indicate the force acting on the rocket. So very simple, you will just need to show the arrows that is pointing downwards. So you will label it this way. So this one, let's say this is air resistance. And then another one will be the same thing, gravitational force, both of them pointing downwards. You need to label them clearly to get your two marks here. Okay, last question, let's look at this. Kim dragged a wooden block across a table with four different surfaces and the results of the experiment are shown in the table below. Okay, so you see that a uh, different amount of forces is needed for different surfaces. Remember, the rougher the surface, the more force is needed. All right, so uh, this is 105, 88, 127, 94. So straight away, we know arrange in order starting from the smoothest to the roughest. So the smoothest definitely will be the lowest, which is B over here. And D is the second one, followed by A, 105. And the hardest to pull across will be C. So now, in another experiment, Kim glued surface A over here, the number third smoothest. From the first experiment onto a ram over here, so they stick it over here, and they put the same wooden block up the ram. So will it be harder to pull? So will the force needed to pull the wooden block up the ram be more than, less than, or the same? Okay, as you can see, the answer says here, more than. Okay, so why is that so? Because obviously you imagine yourself running up a hill versus running on a flat ground. Which one is harder? Of course, the one running up the field because there's more resistance for you due to the gravitational pull trying to get you down. Okay, so going uphill is definitely harder. More strength is needed, right? So how do you explain that you must put the word gravitational pull or the pull of gravity inside your answer? So the wooden block is being moved in the opposite direction as the pull of gravity or gravitational force. All right, so that's how you answer these kind of questions using force keywords. Okay, I hope you learned something today. Do subscribe to our YouTube channel. I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.